So what we've done in this study is we've started to move away from uh, using risk factors uh, individually and also away from using them as binary uh, variables. We believe that if you use risk factors such as age, white cell count and minimal residual disease as continuous variables rather than binary, you get a, uh, much more information uh, out of them in order to be able to predict relapse. And in addition, rather than using them individually, what we want to do is integrate it into a single prognostic index. So using data from over two and a half thousand patients treated on UCAL 2003, which is uh, a, a trial that was performed in the UK between 2003 and 2011, what we did is develop a numeric risk score that could be used to predict relapse very accurately. Obviously, this was fantastically good in a discovery cohort, but we also needed to validate it. So we validated it in equal size validation cohort of about two and a half thousand patients derived from three different clinical trials around the UK and found that the prognostic index had a very similar distribution in both the, the discovery and validation cohorts and it was equally good at predicting relapse in the validation cohort as in the discovery cohort. So what we then did is compared the use of that prognostic index to predict relapse against the risk algorithms that were used in all those individual trials and found that the prognostic index was much more powerful at predicting relapse than the current risk groupings used in those clinical trials. Now the real value of the prognostic index is you can then use that value to generate risk groups of any size and uh, uh, um, an outcome that you want to as you know, as a treating clinician going forward. So if you wanted to identify the best performing 20% of patients, you can do that and you can define that very clearly. Equally, if you wanted to identify the worst performing 10% of patients, you can do that using this risk score. So the real advantage of the new, using the numeric risk score is that it gives you much greater flexibility when you're designing new clinical trials or study uh, protocols in order to be able to define homogeneous risk groups which you can then go on and treat um, as you, know, you, you want to in the future.